So now we're going to have a look at the central limit theorem, which is linked to the normal distribution. So this is where we find the mean of several, uh, se several means, sorry, of samples, which all have a size n, where the mean of the population is mu and the standard deviation of the population is sigma. So we're expecting that the mean of the sample should be the same as the mean of the population. However, the standard deviation of the sample should be the same as the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. So by that, we're meaning, if I just draw a little diagram here, that if we had a population that was distributed, let's say like this, a bell-shaped curve, where our mu was in the center here, then when we are taking our samples and we're looking at the means of our samples, I'm just gonna move this down a little bit. The means of our samples are going to be distributed something like this. I bet it's a little bit, it's not exactly bell shaped. Uh, where obviously the mean of the means of our samples is the same as the mean of our population. But you can see here that the data is less spread out and that's because of uh, our central limit theorem that the standard deviation is going to be the same as the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So the distribution of the means will still be approximately normally distributed provided that n is sufficiently large. The larger the n is, the better the approximation. So the larger our sample size is, the better the approximation is. Now there is a little bit extra information to this and it's a little bit explained here. So if n is less than 30, which is what we classify as a small sample, the population must be normally distributed for central limit theorem to work. Just shorted that to S uh, CLT. If N is greater than or equal to 30, so that's what we call a large population, then the population can follow any distribution and the means of the samples will still be normally distributed. So it doesn't matter if the population was rectangularly distributed or any distribution, then the means of the sample are still normally distributed if the sample is large enough. However, for both of these, the sample must always be a random sample and that's really really important that our sample is always a random sample the other two you have to think about a little bit more i have explained it a little bit here that the central limit theorem tells us that if n is big enough which is more than 30 then the means will be normally distributed even if the population wasn't normally distributed. However, if it is smaller than 30, then the population has to be normally distributed in order for this to work. So we're going to have a look at some examples and then you're going to do a now you try question. And we're going to emphasise how we know that we're doing this and not just a normal finding probabilities question. Have a look at the example now. So we have the weights of the pebbles at the beach are distributed with a mean of 48.6 and a standard deviation of 8.5. Now we're not told that this is normally distributed. So here that's fine because we have the random sample of 50 pebbles we're looking for the mean, which tells us that we're using central limit theorem, and we're looking for it to be less than 49. So we're looking for the probability 
that the mean is less than 49. And to do this, we're going to keep the mean the same as the mean in the population, which is 48.6. And the standard deviation is going to be 8.5. The new standard deviation is 8.5 divided by the square root of 50. So now we're going to pop that into our calculator. So we're going to have minus 9999999. Our upper is going to be 49. Our standard deviation is 8.5 divided by the square root of 50. And our mean is 48.6. And that gives us 0 0.630. Now, for this second bit here, again, it looks very similar. We're trying to find the mean of a random sample of 15 pebbles this time. And we're seeing if it's greater than 47. Now, I just want to add a little bit in here saying, assuming that the population is normally distributed. Now, the reason why I would add this line into my answer is that we can only do this if the population was normally distributed. And the reason why part B is different to part A is because in part A, we have a large sample. In part B, we only have a small sample. So we would need the population to be normally distributed in order for us to do this. So assuming that the population is normally distributed, we'd have the probability that the mean is greater than 47. Our mean that we're putting into our calculator is going to stay the same. And our new standard deviation this time is going to be 8.5 divided by the square root of 15 because that's our new sample size. So we're going to have 47 as our lower, 9999999 as our upper, and our new standard deviation is going to be 8.5 divided by the square root of 15. And that gives us 0.76. Seven. This video and give the now you try a go. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and you gave the now you try question a go. So this time we have uh, the time it takes for students to complete a short test that has a mean of eighteen minutes and a standard deviation of eight point five minutes. A sample of eighty students is taken, and we're trying to find the probability that the mean time it takes. Uh, will be le at least 19.4. So at least means that 19.4 is the smallest one that we want. So we want the X bar to be greater than or equal to 19.4. Using central limit theorem, because our sample size is sufficiently large, we have mu equals 18. And the new standard deviation is going to be 8.5 divided by the square root of 8. And that gave us an answer of 0.0704. Uh, and then for part B, we're trying to find the probability that the mean time taken for the test will be between 19.4 and 19 minutes. And again, that gives us 17.4 to 19, uh, which is not 0 0.590. So, because in both of these questions, they are referring to the mean that tells us that we are looking at central limit theorem. If it said, what is the probability that an individual pupil takes more than 90 minutes, okay, which you wouldn't do because that'd be outside the range, let's say more than 19 minutes, sorry, um, then we wouldn't be using central limit theorem. So when you're asked a question to find a probability, you need to check, one, has it told me that it's normally distributed? Or does it just give me a mean and a standard deviation? Two, what is my sample size if I have a sample? If I don't have a sample, then I'm not using central limit theorem. Three, does it state that it's a random sample? Because here, 
In our now you try question, we are assuming that the sample of 80 students taking the test is a random sample. So we have to be careful with that as well. Thank you very much for listening.